five macros that you absolutely need to have. These not only help you save time, but simplify your game development journey and give you a bit more functionality. We can start by creating a macro library. This is very useful because we can access the macros from anywhere. Here we can select what class that's required for the macros to work. Actor being the most flexible. Let's start with the shuffler macro. Often, you will need a random outcome. Maybe you want a random sound to play or the AI making a random decision. With the shuffler, not only will you not need to set up a switch on int anymore, but you can also prevent the precursor result from occurring again. Add an input and set it to be an exec type. On the output, add one and set it to be an integer. This will return the random number. If we search for it in our character class, or any other class for that matter, it will show up. Add another input called min and max, both to be integers. Lastly, add a boolean. This will give you the choice of preventing the number that just occurred. So if you check this, you won't get the same number twice in a row. Add a local integer. Also add a random integer in range. Connect the min and max accordingly. Since the random integer will always return a new number, we need to set a variable to be the number and use that instead so that we don't get a new random number every time we use it. Add a branch and check. We'll set up the false first. Add a switch on int. You can remove the default pin. Here you can add as many options as you want. Since we want these macros to be universal and usable for any situation that demands it, I recommend adding a bunch. You only use as many as you need using the min and max variables. For demonstration purposes, I'll set up zero to five. Connect the variable to the switch selection. Also add the output pins for each number. This should match the amount of pins you added to the switch. On true, add another branch and check if the integer equals the next variable we're about to create. To check if our current number is the same as the next number, we need to store the result after getting it. On true, connect back to the assign to change the number if it's the same. Are you getting tired of having to add a delay and reset the do once all the time? Me too. That's why the do once with timer macro is perfect. Simply add the amount of delay you want and it will reset itself after the given time. If you set the delay to zero, it won't reset and you can use the do once normally. Start by double clicking the default do once. Copy everything between the input and output. You can also create macros inside your class and copy paste to different classes manually. Paste and add the same inputs and outputs as the default do once. Add a float input that will represent the delay. Add a sequence before completed and check if the delay equals zero. If it doesn't, add a delay and connect the amount to the input variable. On finished, reset the node. So here I have an enemy and on tick it rotates towards the player using the player character's location. That works fine until the player class is destroyed. Instead of manually having to add is valid nodes every time you want to reference the player character, you can instead make this macro once and use it all the time. This one is very easy to make. Just check if the player character is valid. Also add an output in order to use the character's reference further. You can either set it to be the correct type or wildcard. You'll have to connect the macro in the execution flow in order to use it, unlike the get player character node. Whether you're healing or doing damage, it can get annoying to have to set up material changes all the time. Using this macro, we can go through the process once and use it indefinitely for all purposes. Simply connect the target component you want to affect, choose its default materials, and the material you want it to change to. 
and boom, you're done. As a bonus, you can also make it do it multiple times. Add one input for the target you want to change the material for. Depending on your mesh, some might have one material, others can have more than 10. Again, since we want it to be universally applicable, I recommend adding multiple. I'll add three for the sake of the video. Add the color material as well. With the element index input, you can select how many materials your target has. So in my case, the mesh has two. Therefore, I'll set the index to one when using it so that it changes both materials to the color material. First, set the material to the color mat. Then add a delay and change it back to the default. You can also add a duration input to decide how quick the flash should be. Add a branch and check how many times it should work. Also, increment a local integer to keep count. Set it to zero when it's done, so that when you use it again, it won't start at three, for example. If you have multiple materials, connect it like this. Change the material index as well. If you set the material type to material, material instances won't show up. To fix it, change to material instance instead. In Unreal, we're able to get our character's velocity, but if you want to do something with it, you're always going to have to branch up. With this node, you can return whether the character is moving or not, and at what speed per axis. You can also choose to check once or constantly. Add two inputs, one exec pin and a boolean. If we check this, the macro will recheck over and over. Make sure not to abuse this, though. Add a branch and an or. Also add an or to the or. Check whether the value is greater or less than zero with all values. Add some outputs for each value. You can either add all as a vector and split it when using it, or do it like this. On true, check if the loop is enabled. False goes to is moving. Add a slight delay on sequence and reconnect back. Also do the same thing on false and connect to not moving. You can return the velocity values or decide what to do if the character's moving or not. You can also decide to loop or not at any time by promoting it to a variable inside your character. 